All right, everyone, we'll get uh, get kicked off here. Uh, welcome, uh, everyone. Thank you for joining this uh, first in a series of webinars brought to you by WebConnect Plus. So first, a little bit about WebConnect Plus. Uh, WebConnect Plus is a global online community uh, founded by uh, a few uh, leading uh, industry leading companies in our, our industry. Uh, the purpose behind WebConnect Plus is really like we understand that printers, uh, they need to reduce their costs, streamline processes, uh, and just kind of increase the user experience uh, that the printer converter is bringing to their customer. Their customer is uh, used to this Amazon one-click order uh, type of a world that we live in now. Uh, and we know that this transformation to more automation, to better user experience, can be a challenging one. A lot of times we don't even know where to start. Uh, the printer converter doesn't even know where to, to begin uh, to start to ask questions. Um, so we see this all over the place. We see a lot of the same uh, questions coming up uh, at all of our different customers. Um, so our companies, uh, Infigo, Significance, uh, and Tilly Labs, we've come together uh, to form this global community uh, where we can be a resource uh, for you to ask questions uh, and just to kind of meet regularly uh, to, to uh, just yeah, help to answer your questions around this whole transformation uh, of automation uh, and of web to print. So uh, the three founding members, uh, we have Infigo, world-class web to print uh, solution provider. Uh, we have significant automation, uh, next generation software integrator uh, focused on custom workflow development, uh, color management, and really end-to-end -end business integration. Uh, and then finally, we have Tilia Labs. Uh, Tilly Labs is API-driven uh, planning and imposition. So in this first webinar that we're going to bring to you today, we're going to talk about how these three companies and our solutions are open platforms. They are completely integratable, uh, bringing you know, the printer, uh, uh, the print service provider the most flexibility uh, when it comes to delivering a streamlined end-to-end -end solution for your customer. So today we're going to talk about how in Figo, uh, we're going to start with uh, uh, in Infigo, uh, in the, the web to print platform. Your customer is going to initiate an order, uh, uh, design their product, and pass that seamlessly from the, the web to print platform down into and focus switch, uh, which is going to uh, manage the PDF workflow. Uh, and then finally end up in uh, Tilia Phoenix for imposition. So we'll see a true um, web all the way out to production uh, workflow today brought to you by um, yeah, our, our three partners. A little bit about myself. My name is George Follickman. I'm the sales director uh, here at Tilio Labs. I'll be moderating uh, today's event. I'll be asking uh, uh, the Q&A session at the end. Um, and uh, before we get started, I would like to do a little bit of housekeeping. So I know all of you are probably sick of Zoom at this point. Uh, we, uh, maybe you already know everything there is to know about Zoom, uh, but just for a refresher for those who don't, uh, you are going to have the ability to ask questions uh, to us and to the panel uh, throughout this presentation. We'll save all those questions to the end uh, during our Q&A session, but if you'd like to ask a question during this presentation, uh, go ahead and use the chat function, direct your questions to me. Um, yeah, we've turned off some of the chat functions in Zoom. So this is going to be the best way for you to uh, ask those questions, especially as they pop up during the presentation. Okay, I would like to introduce you to your customer. Meet Amy. Uh, Amy is the creative director of Automate Brewery. Automate Brewery is that microbrewery down the street. And Amy is the creative director uh, of this brewery. She is a young uh, millennial. Uh, she is a print novice. She knows very, very little about print production. And quite frankly, she doesn't want to know anything about it. Um, what Amy is uh, looking for, she definitely does not want to interact with your salespeople. She wants a streamlined, like just well-tailored experience where she can go online, order uh, you know, one of her SKUs, 
Her company, uh, Automate Brewery, they have tons of SKUs. Every few weeks, they're coming out with a new, uh, a, a new beer flavor, a new beer style. Uh, and she needs to be able to order uh, labels for those uh, those beers, but she also needs to just manage uh, the professional branding of uh, Automate Brewery. She wants to appear bigger than she actually is. Uh, so she needs a way that she can just go online, click to order, click to reorder, uh, and, and do all of this without any kind of, of friction or um, yeah anything that's going to bring her, her down. So Amy's journey is actually going to start uh, on uh, a web to print platform. Uh, so this is where our partner in Figo comes in. And uh, specifically, Antonia is going to uh, walk us through the first uh, phase of Amy's journey. Antonia, it's over to you. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. <laughs> um, just covering all bases here. Um, I'm so, so super happy to be a part of this um, inaugural webinar. Um, automation really is key to all of our customer success and that's why we can't wait to bring you this series. Um, for those who don't know me, I'm Antonia. I'm the Partnership Growth Manager at Infigo, um, and I'm going to be taking you through um, the first part of the de demonstration. I'm also um, lucky enough to um, have Douglas on the call as well. Douglas is uh, the founder and CEO of Infigo, and he's going to be joining us for the Q&A session um, at the end. Douglas has a vast experience within the industry and anything UX, e-commerce, automation, he's your man. So uh, we'll get thinking of your questions. <laughs> Um, so I briefly thought about how I could skirt around the topic, but unfortunately I have had to bring in the C word. So um, COVID has really accelerated the customer buying experience. And so it's a more e-commerce based um, experience and, and is, is effect effectively essential. So, um, and the need for automation is then absolutely essential. So the way that buyer behavior was, was slowly changing pre-pandemic, but what we found is this is massively accelerated over the last two years so people are you know buying you know in disparate locations they're much more isolated they need to have um they need to have buy things online they need to buy things on their phone there's just so many more um opportunities to to use an e-commerce platform um, than, than what there was maybe even you know five or two years ago so i wanted to just quickly mention about what we have actually seen within the last uh, two years so I sat down with our customer success team and just asked them a couple of questions really about, you know, what our customers have been, um, what, what they have done uh, with, within the last two years and, and how they, they have made this a success. So the first thing that came was that 24-7, 365 ordering is effect effectively essential. And that's what an e-commerce web to print software enables effectively. But what we have seen is that we've seen our, our clients pushing the software out of the norm. So by pushing them, the, the traditional, you know, going online, ordering a product, checking out, they've been pushing their customers, they've been going to the brands and they've said, we've got this amazing tool that allows us to create this personalization experience. And we think this is going to be do, give you X, Y, Z value. So as an example, um, a brand wanted to um, give their customer their their employees a personalization experience to you know to show they're being thought of etc cetera, etc cetera. so they sent them a, a link they could go on and personalize an item they could see it and then it was delivered to their door they put in their address and it was delivered to the door uh, you know a couple of days later so this is the power of the software is that they were really able to create really exciting personalization opportunities and this my point three and four is is really where the creativity and innovation we are so fortunate to be in such an extraordinary creative and innovative market um, and this is what we've seen with um with our product is is it that it, we can create and we can innovate and we can also take it to the market in a, in a, in a timely fashion too so what i'm going to demonstrate you to in in a moment is our software but there's in in to summarize it in a nutshell there's three key areas so the first area is, is the e-commerce um, area. So we have within the software, you can order order items, you can check out, you can add to basket, you can pay, you can have delivery methods, all that kind of stuff. So the standard e-commerce um, opportunities. We then have Mega Edit. Mega Edit is a very powerful online dynamic designer. This is an editor that can have a plethora of um, opportunities. 
with mega edit you can edit something completely from scratch so you could have a beer label design where users can go in and put add in their logo add in their imagery they can completely create from scratch it can be templated or they could be an upload product so if someone already has their artwork they can upload that artwork mega edit is a webinar in itself so i'm not going to push it too much further and the third part is automation so as part of our software we have a very uh, dynamic application called connect flow which allows our, us to collate all this order information and send it into third party systems so in this case we're going to send it into switch and andrew and sean and significance in a moment will show you that um, integration i'm just going to turn my screen to uh, the demonstration website that we've set up um, and this website um, is really for Amy. So we've set this website up for Amy so that she can go in, design her beer label or upload her artwork. So we've created two use case scenarios here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to design a beer label first of all. And with this example, I am going to initially create, um, make some selections, preview a live price, put in how many I need of those, and then I'm going to launch the editor. So this is launching Mega Edit. And this is a templated product where Amy can go in and make some, uh, some small changes to her artwork that she needs and then have that sent straight to press to be, to be produced. So on the right hand side here, I've got the option to change the background. Fabulous, I'm going to change it to a blue background. I've got the option to select a logo. Right, today I'm going to use my Infigo logo. And I'm going to call this my, my beer. Um, most of the time, I think beer is fairly delicious, so we'll call it a delicious beer. Um, and I can fundamentally, I can see that as a preview. Now, the extension of this and what really excites, uh, excites our customers and our customers' customers is that you can see this in 3D. So not only are you having the opportunity to see it as a flat layout, you're also seeing it in 3D. So actually, this gives me a lot of opportunity to make, make small minor changes. Actually, my logo, I'd like to change the logo or I'd like to make some movements but they can move it around, play around with it, zoom in, zoom out. That has such massive value um, to, to the customer. And it also means that there's not gonna be back and forth approval emails, um, which I'm sure you're all accustomed to. And at this point, yeah, I'm really happy with my design. I'm gonna add it to my cart, I'm gonna check out, and then I'm done. I've done, I've ordered my products so I don't have to think about it for the rest of the day. So that's one example of a product. The other example that I'm going to show is an upload product. So effectively, all an upload product is, is if someone already has their artwork, they know what they're doing, they don't want to muck about, they just want to see a price, they want to make some small selections, they want to put in uh, the quantity that they need, they want to press start and they want to upload their artwork. So it's a simple, easy user experience to upload your artwork. So I've uploaded my artwork, I've previewed it, I'm happy with it, and I add it to my cart. At this point, we could also potentially pre-flight the artwork if it was necessary. So yeah, I've got my basket, a standard checkout process, I'm going to press checkout. I'm already a customer, so I'm going to log in, or I could re-register if I wanted to too. So at this point, I'm going to log in, and then I'm going to take myself through the checkout process. Now, the flexibility within the software means that you can integrate with things like uh, different delivery carriers. So you could have Rush on there. You could have you know, a cost associated to that. We could potentially even integrate into a payment provider so that you could pay by credit card, um, et cetera, et cetera. I get a confirmation of my order. I place the order. And then at this point, me as the customer, I get an email saying, fabulous, Antonio, you've created your product. You've got an order. We are going to be processing this now. What the software then does is creates this order, creates all the information, and it collates it and sends it into um, a third party system, which in this case will be Switch for production purposes. So it's a full end to end automated solution. Um, I hope that was a, a, it was a very quick demonstration. I know we're limited on time here because questions are important. But at this point, I'm going to hand over now to Sean and Andrew. Thank you, Antonia. I was wait briefly for Andrew to share his screen on his side. While he's doing that, though, uh, I'd like to welcome everybody. My name is Sean Davis, Director of Technology at Significance Automation. I also have with me here Andrew Oswood, who's a specialist in the InFocus suite of software, uh, who is clearly sharing a screen, and he'll be demonstrating some of what Switch and the uh, you know, suite of software has to offer. So as an industry integrator, 
in an added value reseller of best in class software. Uh, we have seen a huge demand for automation to facilitate e commerce, smart gaming, and imposition all across the sectors. We have grown with our customers who need touchless uh, environments and uh, who are centered around web to print. We're going to be focusing on you know, the integration between Infigo and Tilia's suite of software and uh, how a true end to end lights out automation process will actually work within an environment like this. So to start off here, uh, for those of you who may have never seen InFocus before or Switch, um, it's largely a, a middleware product. It's a hub and spoke or a glue that binds all of your isolated processes in one. It's the workhorse behind the scenes that does all the heavy lifting before pushing it to its next destination. Very simply, it takes an input, it does something, and then it outputs something in return. Following where Antonia left off, we're demonstrating a complete hands-off approach, like I said. Switch is actually going to retrieve the order data from Infigo, and that's going to include the art as well as anything to do with the order itself. So the order quantities, uh, you know, potentially if you expand it out, what type of stock you want to uh, print that on. Um, it really sky's the limit. So whatever data that is coming from Infigo, we can utilize that as we're going through the process. So switch in this case is utilized to collect and store the files for production in a production server environment. So what Andrew's bringing up here, as we collect the data, as Infigo is passing us the information, we're actually creating a, a job folder or a order folder uh, with all the relevant information that's been passed. So we've set up some existing folders and we are storing some of the files that are being passed down in this case in an originals folder or depending on how you have it set up in your environment, it could be like a customer supply folder where we drop the original files. After this is established and we create this folder structure, a switch is going to pass the files to Hitstop, which is another one of the InFocus suite of software. And that's actually going to pre-flight, analyze the file, and fix anything that uh, needs to be addressed before the file can move on. So in a complete lights out automated process, Hitstop can analyze, it can report, and route jobs on whether or not it's valid or invalid. The report itself that, that comes out of this product can be tailored and customized to fit the needs of the individual product. Uh, you know, if, if you wanted to do a different report based off the print method, or you wanted to do your own sort of uh, customized uh, profiling. So for example, if you uh, work with door hangers and you wanted to pre-flight in a very specific manner for door hangers, you could certainly do that uh, and then have a separate one for business cards and so on and so forth. In this example, what Andrew's brought up here, we've actually branded the report with the Web Connect logo. And, uh, and in this report itself, we can customize what can be seen versus taken off if it doesn't need to be seen by an end user or by somebody within production as a whole. So with the bookmarks on the left-hand side, we can exclude, for example, page boxes. If page boxes doesn't need to be shown, or uh, again, depending on what you're working with, uh, it's not really necessary or, or the client doesn't care about the inner workings of, of some of that data. They just want a very high level, like this summary page, to be able to see what's been modified, uh, any warnings that are maybe okay to move forward, but uh, we still want to alert somebody. And then an error specifically of what's critical, what can't move forward. In this particular case, uh, there is image that is below the resolution that we specified which it's going to error out that file. And depending on what we do within a process, we could route back to Infigo and say, you know, please upload a new file. This file is not valid. As Antonia said, you could of course hook up, uh, you know, pit stop slash pre-flighting within Infigo and have the files uh, pre-flighted on, on that side too. Now, this isn't the only type of report that we can do with pit stop. There is also, uh, an annotated report that we can utilize. And what Andrew's brought up here 
this is a little more hands-on and depending on your client or depending on the team that's actually going to be utilizing these files, you can uh, build this in a way so they can actually click on the individual report item or bullet point here. And it'll, it'll highlight the specific area of what's actually wrong with this file. So again, uh, very much the same file as what was demonstrated in the previous report. The image resolution is too low. And when he clicked on it, you can see that it sort of grayed out the background that highlighted that specific piece. That's because this whole component is actually classified as an image, and that's why it's highlighting everything. But it's very much the same with warnings as well. Anything you see within this bookmark section, uh, you can click on. It will highlight the respective object or component on the page, uh, and it gives in my opinion, the more advanced users, the capability to click through and look at some of this information. The full report is great. Again, from a branding perspective, you can customize and tailor it. But if you have advanced users, this tends to be the go-to from my experience personally. Uh, this isn't the only thing we can do with reporting though. Uh, utilizing Switch, we can actually generate an HTML branded email. In that email itself, again, can include any of the information that we have from this report. And again, in the example here, we've actually tailored it and branded it with the Web Connect information. And uh, we've actually attached the report to the email. So again, that can be viewed. So if in this particular example, if the pre-flight fails, we're automatically sending an email that can be to the client, somebody internally, a distribution email to a group. Um, really sky's the limit and it really depends on your environment and how engaged you would like that client to be. To add to that as well, if, uh, as, as I mentioned, doing a call back to Infigo, if there is an issue with the file, we could potentially alert back to Infigo and say, hey, you know, please upload a new, uh, a new product or a new PDF document so we can re-preflight it and then push that forward. So just to su summarize on the pre-flighting component there, once you've pre-flighted a document through pit stop, that document will essentially be sent back to switch, which is what we're, we're looking at right now. And it'll go down one of several paths. So in this case, we have an art folder, we have a report folder, and we have a failed folder. In our example, when we're failing, we're emailing it out to somebody. Uh, but we can certainly store that back into the production server if we needed to. But the ones we're more uh, concerned about or, or the ones that we need to actually push forward to Tilia would be our art, which Andrew has highlighted there coming out of the pre-flight PDF component. And we also have the report being pumped out on the folder just below that. And that's going to be stored again within the, the order folder, the uh, folder that we created in the production server so anybody internally can look at that report if need be. So once we pre-flighted a file, uh, now we need to prep the file for it to actually be ready to be uh, you know, pushed over to Tilia and to be in pose. Uh, one of the unique aspects of Switch is the utilization of an app store. So similar to Google Play or Apple's app store, if there's a function that's missing in Switch that you don't currently see or, or you really have a very specific need, you can search in the App Store to see if a third-party de developer has created an app to fit your, your need. Uh, what Andrew's brought up here is actually the App Store and we filtered on, in this case, some of Tilia's apps that they have available within the store. There are components that are free um, and then there are also components like any app store that you can certainly purchase for, which is either a one-time or a yearly fee, if need be. Uh, going back to Switch, as you can see, we are actually utilizing a bunch of these apps in a couple different locations. So the ones that Andrew are highlighting, we have Scan Hierarchy, Create Job Folder. Uh, those ones at the top are, are existing products or apps that exist on the App Store that are free today for anyone to utilize if, if need be. And looking at the uh, 
list of participants, there's a couple of you that I've worked with and Andrew has worked with as well that has actually used some of these uh, apps in existing workflows. The bottom component, you can also incorporate custom scripts using a scripting module. And in this case, Significance has developed a couple of apps that helps manipulate the data coming from Infigo. And then we can uh, modify that data so we can pass it to Phoenix correctly. And I don't know, Andrew, if you wanted to briefly show one of those CSVs um, that we have there. So in this particular example, we are using a custom app that's taking some of the data that was passed and we are generating a CSV file that is going to be fed into Phoenix, uh, you know, passing the, the order quantity, what stock we're using specifically, whether we're uh, allowed to rotate it or not, if there's bleed in information, spacing, et cetera. Uh, this can be expanded upon and this is of course, uh, not unique to switch. This is all components that are also available in Phoenix, which I'm sure uh, Tyler will touch on shortly. So once we create that, that CSV file and we pass it into Phoenix, obviously we're imposing the file. And again, throughout this whole process from start to finish when Antonia placed the order to now, everything's been hands off. Andrew has been doing nothing behind the scenes to, to you know, fake this, so to speak. So. Everything's one ran through from start to finish, and this is the imposed file from some of the items that have been placed. And again, once you impose something, we can certainly send it straight to the RIP if we wanted to do some color correcting using either built-in components in Switch or other third-party apps that exist. We can do that before we impose or after we impose, really depending on the need. As I mentioned, it, it's, a, it's a middleware, but it's also a sandbox. So really, whatever you can dream up, we can certainly do within Switch. Uh, we just sort of map that out and then, and then build it in there. And then, as I said, it's a hub and spoke, so it connects your siloed processes together. So uh, from that point, this is your complete hands-off approach. It's gone from just simple data to pre-flighting a file, getting a report back that you could send to a customer. And then at the very end, we impose a file and that can go straight to the press. And you know, from order placement to that process, assuming everything's good with that file and even those, those custom pieces that have been uploaded in that order, uh, no one had to do anything. No CSR had to be involved. Everything was done hands off and passed to the appropriate location. So, there's a couple other modules, uh, as Antonia said before, we are limited in terms of time, but uh, as I said, it is a sandbox. So there are some other components like a database module, if you needed to connect to, for example, you're a smaller shop that has FileMaker running in the background and you're storing some orders there, you could certainly integrate with those components as well. Um, but yeah, really sky's the, the limit. And uh, at this point, uh, thank you for the time and I'll pass it over to, to Tyler and Tilia go more in depth on Phoenix itself. Perfect. Thank you, Sean. All right, so to wrap it all up here and uh, kind of pull all the pieces together. My name is Tyler Thompson. I'm the solutions director here at Tilia Labs. And for those of you who don't know who Tilia Labs is or, or what we do, we are laser focused on solving uh, really one problem. And that's how do we take uh, a list of orders and impose and plan those orders uh, for your particular output device. So for this webinar, um, we really focused on labels, right? So we kind of take a, a step back and revisit the uh, graphic that George was discussing at the beginning of the webinar. We had talked a little bit about your customer and that was Amy. And Amy was part of a uh, brewery, Automate Brewery. And Amy was looking to order labels. So Amy jumped on to her web to print storefront uh, via Infigo. 
jumped online and pulled some artwork in, created a label, also had uh, some existing PDFs um, for their, their different SKUs and designed the graphics in, in real time. So that information moved, uh, those orders were then aggregated and pulled together via Enfocus switch. So we saw that, that portion um, of, of the workflow once the order was generated, get pushed into, into production. And then those orders were aggregated. Um, data was transformed to a way that um, Phoenix can accept it. Uh, the PDFs were pre-flighted, made sure the art was good to go. And then, um, yeah, we kind of saw how Enfocus Switch is that, is that glue or middleware between Infigo and um, our product, Tilia Phoenix. So now we're kind of at that last step. And that last step is how do we take these orders and then properly prepare them for uh, and impose them for our press? So that brings us to, uh, yeah, Tilia Labs in, in our product. And we're gonna talk a little bit about, um, just to show you uh, for a label example, how we can ingest those orders, take those quantities that were ordered and those SKUs that were ordered and automatically calculate uh, the best way of imposing those files for press, looking at your rotary dies and your uh, digital label press. So what we find is, you know, the, the challenge uh, ends up getting solved with Infigo. So the, the challenge of, uh, yeah, going in and capturing those, you know, smaller runs via a, a web to print storefront, reducing the need for sales, uh, like George mentioned earlier. So once that problem gets solved, then the, you know, a, a new problem starts to, to occur and the bottleneck becomes, you know, how do we manage these short runs and how do we manage these short runs in a profitable way, right? Especially when order quantities are really, really low. Uh, we don't want to get stuck, you know, with hundreds of SKUs at really, really short, you know, uh, run lengths and then needing a human to touch every single one of, of those orders, right? It, it really defeats the, the purpose of trying to capture that type of work. So there's a couple, uh, other spe specifically for labels, a couple other interesting um, you know pieces of feedback that we get from our customers when we look at you know digital labels on a on a roll. Um, typically, uh, we find our customers running each of those orders, you know, uh, filling up the frame or filling up the die and running you know skew number one and then skew number two right after it and skew number three right after it. So when we have you know five orders like uh, like we have in this case or, or five SKUs, um, that then turns into you know five setups on the indigo, five color checks on the indigo. Um, you know you're going to have to go through and, and splice and rewind uh, those five orders. So it becomes you know for these smaller runs really challenging and and also rather time consuming um, you know performing those setups on on press checking the color on press so we need a smarter and faster way to uh, manage this process so I'm going to show two just quick examples in in Phoenix um, so this is this is our product Tilia Phoenix and we just saw Sean. Um, and, and the team at Significance automate this process through Enfocus Switch. But I just want to show uh, a, a couple quick things inside of Tilia Phoenix visually um, so we can see how uh, running digital label orders or just any orders in general can be more streamlined. So here's that CSV file um, from Infigo. And uh, Amy had ordered these five different labels. So order quantities 500, 1,500. Um, and we've got different artwork for each of those SKUs. So pretty simple uh, process here. We're just gonna take that CSV file and drag it right into um, our product, Tilia Phoenix. And Phoenix is gonna go uh, grab those PDF files on your file server um, from Infigo that were uploaded and then attach those order quantities and define the substrate um, based on that, uh, that order data there. 
So in Phoenix, you can see um, it's going to automatically snap to the die shape or to the, the label order size, masking all of the extraneous uh, information on the outside. So we've got our different SKUs here, uh, and there's five different SKUs. And typically what we see is a label converter is going to take these five SKUs, like I mentioned, well, open them up five times uh, if they don't have any automation software. And then perform imposition similar to this, where you've got you know a uh, rotary die here that's twelve up, so three across and four down. And then for each one of these skews, they're going to generate um, you know five skews. It's going to be five print frames that they're going to print n number of times on on their uh, on their digital press. And we can do that in Phoenix really quickly. You can see we just did it. it took uh, about one second to impose it that way. Um, but there's, I mentioned a couple of challenges that, that we hear from our customer base um, about uh, setups on the digital press, you know, checking the color um, on, on the digital press, right? So we're going to have to do that five times in this case. But you can see Phoenix will also tell you based on the order quantity, you know, the, the amount of roll material that you're going to use, how long we're going to be on press, the approximate cost based on the, uh, the click cost and based on your uh, material cost. And then the file is fully imposed at this point. So um, a couple things you're going to notice is for each one of these um, uh, imposed frames or imposed rotary dies, Phoenix has auto computed the run length or the number of impressions uh, on press to achieve that order quantity. So um, for example, this order needs to be uh, printed 42 times, 84 times, right? It's gonna take up 30 meters of material. So this is, this is good, but um, our customers are then typically, uh, especially on the digital label side, asking, hey, how do we reduce the number of setups on our Indigo to make this process more efficient? And that's where we uh, start looking at opportunities to gang these orders together. And that's exactly why in, in uh, the value that we, why we developed Phoenix and the value that Phoenix brings to the uh, printer converter. So um, I'm gonna take this same order here and I'm, I'm gonna go back into our imposition AI and I'm gonna change our profile from no ganging to ganging. And we're gonna see, we go from about 106 or 107 meters of material uh, to 106.25. So we save a little bit of material here, but more importantly, we go from about you know 50 some minutes on press uh, to 30 minutes on press, right? Opening up capacity on press by ganging these label orders together. So now we go from five setups down to three setups. So we're saving time on, on setting up the press. Um, we're saving material because we don't have that you know 10 to 20 feet of material for each one of those setups. Um, and then we're also saving time in, in rewinding and splicing um, because we're having to do less of that by uh, persisting an order up, up a lane or up, uh, up the web. And then all of this is computed and calculated by Phoenix automatically, right? So, um, you know, typically the challenge is, yeah, we, we, we want to print these things digital, but now we've increased uh, the number of setups on our digital press. So we want to gang the orders, but then if we're ganging all these orders, we have to look at all the, you know, a human is typically looking at all these orders and saying, okay, which ones are on, on matching dies, which one, you know, which orders are on matching material. And then, you know, based on all of my, you know, hundreds or thousands of rotary dies, um, you know, how many up are we going to get? And, and is, do I go two across or do I go like th three across, right? So Phoenix is computing all these things for you instantaneously. Furthermore, we're generating the fully imposed file ganged up and then computing the number of, of frames for each one of these uh, uh, ganged orders. So this then just gets delivered right down to the press. And uh, our imposition is computed. We've reduced material, uh, especially today. That's rather important as well as streamline the, uh, the impositioning process in pre-press, really eliminated that process. All right. So I'm going to pass it back over to George and uh, yep, allow you to wrap up. All right, excellent. 
Thank you, uh, Tyler, and to all of our presenters. Um, yeah, okay, so just, uh, uh, we're not gonna open things up for questions. And part of Web Connect Plus, uh, you know, this is a community. Uh, we, we intend uh, this to be very interactive. We want everyone to, to ask questions uh, uh, to us and to, to each other, uh, really from, from this point moving forward. So um, as a reminder, you can uh, chat us questions. We have tons of people who ask questions during the, uh, during the presentation. We'll get to some of those. Uh, but if you'd also like, you can uh, raise your hand uh, using the raise hand uh, function of Zoom, and we'll actually unmute you and allow you to ask your question um, uh, through Zoom. So we have uh, a few uh, folks here who are going to answer your questions. Of course, our panelists uh, are going to answer questions as well as uh, uh, Doug uh, Gibson from Infigo will, will also jump in as well. Uh, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna jump right in. We've got a bunch of questions, so uh, <clears throat> let's start here. Um, this first question I'm going to uh, direct to Doug. Uh, Doug, uh, there's a couple questions around just the, the complexity of these kinds of integrations. I think maybe people have been burned in the past. Uh, what What are some of the challenges uh, that you have? Uh, run into uh, integrating with uh, software providers like uh, Enfocus and, and Tilly Labs. Um, what are those challenges and, and how, do, how do you overcome them? Thanks, George. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, well done to everybody who's been involved so far. Fantastic demos, guys. So really great to see. Um, and such an important thing, bringing all of this together. So um, well, do well, well done to the gang. Um, <clears throat> I think the important thing is, is try to look at it a bit more holistically. I think some people go straight down to the detail. Um, and what we always um, say to our customers is take a step back. Um, and look at the, the overall picture of what you're trying to achieve. And that's the right the way from the customer journey, right the way of, of, of something being invoiced and pushed right out the door and take a little bit step back from that. Hash out a very simple, it could be a pencil drawing, it could be a diagram in Visio or, or something like that and step through the different workflows. Look at that from, from a business requirements point of view, what do you need to achieve, what you're looking to um, get out of it, what, what the important, then start to map the interactions. And then obviously working with the, 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 the guys at Significance that, that have done this a tons of time of getting some expert opinion before you sort of dive in. Um, we, we hear a lot of customers, hey, Doug, I bought, I bought and focused, but I haven't got a clue how to do it and I've got nobody internally to manage it. So <laughs> I think taking that step back, understanding it and, and not rushing right in to try and solve some of the problems that, if, if you ask some of the community, um, they're probably solved many times over. So there's just a couple of tidbits there that, um, from, from, our, from my point of view. Yeah, perfect. And that actually is a really good segue uh, into the next question that I want to ask, Sean. Um, we had, uh, there's like four or five people who all asked, uh, you know, does this integrate with uh, X MIS system or X ERP system? Um, so, uh, yeah, how does Significance uh, approach uh, these integrations, particularly uh, kind of when we're talking about MIS or ERP systems and this workflow that we've described today? Yeah, it's definitely a good question. Um, and I hear it quite often. Generally, my response back is, does that system have an API or does it have some method of connecting into it? Most modern whether it's an ERP, MIS, CMS, DAM, whatever, they're all going to have a way to connect and either push or pull information out of that system. So, and sometimes that, uh, you know, goes into, oh, we have to buy a very specific module, but really it's going to save you time at the end of the day once you have everything integrated. Um, again, going back to the example of Infico placing an order, and if you're using FileMaker or if you're using some sort of MIS system behind the scenes, uh, for example, if we're talking about, you know, cor corrugation and you're using something to uh, run standards or track stuff on that side of things, you're going to have multiple other systems that you need to integrate with. Uh, in our example, it's a very, very niche thing of just, you know, one input, one output, but you're obviously going to have other things going on. And so... Um, yeah, as long as there's a module to connect to it, it's uh, it's pretty straightforward. 
Perfect. Perfect. The devil's always in the details, I know, uh, with those kinds of things. But uh, yeah, it sounds like APIs are pretty important or some kind of module that uh, that allows us to push and pull data. And uh, if, if we have that, then Sean, would you say more or less, more often than not, we can we can find a way to integrate? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. The, uh, perfect. the example for Infigo is uh, when we worked with them to get this all running, is uh, there's just an app that they provide that um, it monitors the system that once those orders get placed, uh, we get a notification on our system. We pick up an XML file and, and that data file. And uh, once we have that file and that data, um, the sky's the limit for us. We can, we can do kind of whatever we need with that. Excellent. Excellent. Um, okay, I've got a, uh, a question. I'm going to ask this first to Tyler, but uh, I'll let anyone else uh, jump in if they also have uh, a, a reply. Um, we had a couple people ask about um, variable data. Uh, Tyler, can you explain a little bit how uh, Tilia Phoenix uh, from the imposition side handles uh, variable data? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, there's, there's a couple of ways. So typically with variable data, you're going to have a uh, database of those variables, right? Like let's take um, first names, for example. So we're going to have a uh, list of, of first names that are coming from some source. Could be uh, an Excel document, could be online, could be in their MIS system. What we're going to do in Phoenix is allow you to generate um, that base artwork um, in Illustrator or PDF. And then uh, you can attach variable um, text, you can attach variable marks, barcodes, um, which are, are really common in, in our example for labels. Um, and then we have a way of taking that, that data, um, pushing it to each product, and then using that, uh, that variable inside of our text or inside of our barcodes really, really easily. So you can build that directly in, inside of Phoenix um, or directly inside of your Adobe Illustrator file um, by just defining, you know, uh, a string or a barcode that's going to be variable. And then we do the merge of, of the, the database file or the Excel document or the data in general um, to that uh, base artwork file. And then, you know, just like we saw dynamically imposing um, uh, those label SKUs um, on on the web. We would take you know each iteration or each you know variable piece of art uh, all the way up the web as if it was um, yeah one label. Perfect, perfect. Doug or, or Sean, either of you want to want to elaborate on uh, any of that? I think the only thing I'll I'll add and uh, just mention is. Tyler, I know in the latest version of Phoenix that came out, you guys have really ramped up and enhanced marks. Um, I believe it was enhanced marks with individual products, correct? Correct. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. We, we've added a ton, um, even to the point like where we've uh, introduced an entirely new scripting module for, for this use case where we've exposed uh, like the entire PDF library. I mean, you can go in and start variably drawing with, with a pin tool uh, by passing X, Y coordinates, right? Like you can draw variably pretty much anything. Um, you know, mo most common scenario is, is some, some text or a barcode. Uh, but yeah, with, with our scripting, you could go as far as pulling in external files, scripting uh, lines, drawing with a pin tool. I mean, you could do some pretty crazy stuff. Yeah, I think um, the only bit to add is is in um, our lovely Amy. Um, so if we take uh, her scenario, um, she might have a ton of SKUs. Um, so we, she can chuck in a data file to us. We can take that data file. We can either do some pre-processing with it or just fire it directly down to through and focus then to the, to the guys at Tilia Labs. Um, or if it's a much bigger run, we can do stuff like that. Um, so yeah, the, I think there's a lot lots of options and whether the user needs right the way some interaction right up the front or actually they want the heavy lifting to be done based on should I put this on a 6900 should have gone a 20,000 whatever it is if there's some more logic that needs to be driven down the chain and I think 
that's the, the, the really clever thing about working with the, the three businesses and um, we've got we're, 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 that we're talking um, of talking today is 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 we're not trying to or the, the imposition or or, or, or um, sorry not the imposition the, the very we need to needs to be done in fee or it needs to be done in focus or we need to push until it's all about what does the client need and I think that's the important thing and um, neither of us are precious we want it to be done in the most efficient way for the customer giving them the right outputs and each scenario is going to take a different um, route depending on what the end customer needs in and what the end customer needs out. Um, and, and as you mentioned, um, Sean, I think you, you might have a database somewhere. Um, you, you've got a ton of data. You might be feeding that into Tilia Labs. We might be populating some of that. So there could be actually two or three parties going on. Um, might be from, from a drugs. Um, if you're pulling in drug information, putting a recipe information on the back of a label and stuff like that. So there's a, there's a lot of stuff going on um, and, and we can achieve. And I think you've got the flexibility right from the front of the, of the point of entry to, to the point of, of, of sending that job to the rep. So you've got a ton of flexibility within the variable data. Perfect, perfect. Uh, before I ask uh, the next question that came in through the chat here, I just wanted to give everyone a moment. Does anyone want to raise their hand and uh, uh, ask a question uh, directly to one of our, our panelists. Uh, as a reminder, as a function in Zoom, uh, it's a um, that little like emotion uh, thing and you can raise your hand. Uh, so anyone wants to do that? No, yeah, that's okay. Uh, you know, it's sometimes easier just to, to ask in the chat, but uh, very good. Uh, okay, I've got a couple more questions here. Uh, there was one question, and, and I don't want anyone to go too deep into this, uh, because I think we're going to actually have uh, another webinar around this. Uh, but someone uh, noticed, Tyler, uh, your boxes um, uh, on one of your <laughs> slides. Uh, <laughs> well, so there's a question around uh, this this particular integration or, or workflow and uh, whether it's it's specific just for labels or um, if, if it uh, can be expanded into uh, maybe boxes or commercial print. I'm actually gonna start with Doug. Uh, uh, anything to say around that? Hi, yeah, absolutely. I think you've got, um, we, we try to be as agnostic as possible in terms of the, the application type. And that's what definitely one of the strengths of Infigo, you're not, you're not sort of shoehorned in, right, I've got some labels, I need some boxes, got some other stuff. So I think the application is very, very extensive um, for, for, from, from that point of view. Yeah, perfect. Sounds like a, a one-stop shop. And, and if we think back to uh, Amy and, and her problems, uh, you know, the, the, the buyer of today does want that like one-stop shop and, and one platform to manage everything. So uh, I think yeah. that's a great benefit of, of um, yeah, of your solution and, and this, this integration. Um, I think that's George, sorry to cut. Yeah, I think it's a really good point. If we take Amy's scenario, and, and we literally are working live on, on, on this at the moment, is like, Amy wants some labels, but she also wants those labels once they're wrapped around a bottle to go in a box because it's a gift box. And then she wants to be able to, to push that into a, a shipping um, wrapper that goes out the, the door. Um, and I think a lot of customers that were found have gone down one one trick pony and, and can solve one of those things. So I think that's a, a, a great example where you need to just think a little bit more outside of the box um, from, from that one of a better way. <laughs> yeah, Tyler, anything to, to add um, around boxes? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, look, the, the industry is converging, right? And we don't, it's not like we have uh, printers that just print boxes and printers that just print labels right in in a lot well we do still have that but in a lot of cases you know the the industry is is converging and and uh the industry is also finding you know different sources of, of revenue and purchasing label equipment if they're a box printer um or or vice versa right so uh that is you know one thing um i would kind of to our own horn about re really every you know uh, partner on this this call is that we aren't focused just on labels um and like you mentioned george this is 
something that um, you know over the the course of the the next couple quarters um, we focused on labels now, but uh, we're extending um, our demos and our webinars to focus next on well we don't know yet what is next, but uh, cartons or, or boxes or, or wide format. But um, our solutions together, uh, just like in Figo, is is able to facilitate um, a web to print store for. Um, you know, your traditional commercial print or, or cartons or boxes. Um, Tilly Labs can do the same thing for, for impositioning, right? So we can imposition for a web or a roll on rotary dies uh, just as well as we can, you know, uh, true shape nest for, for boxes or cartons or wide format. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, I think uh, we just stay tuned uh, for more to come, uh, I think on, on some of that. So uh, excellent. Um, all right, so we are running low on questions. I'll give uh, everyone another minute or two. If you've got any questions, throw them in the chat. Um, otherwise, I will uh, talk slowly through this last slide in case uh, <laughs> any straggler questions come in. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, thank you everyone for registering. Uh, uh, as part of the registration process, you'll get a, uh, a copy of, of uh, a link to, to this, uh, this webinar. Uh, so that you can uh, share it internally or, or, or view it again. Um, we definitely want to keep this community uh, growing. We want to keep uh, this community engaged. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot more, uh, not just on, on the webinar uh, side, but we actually, uh, we're also going to bring some uh, really exciting uh, uh, things for in-person events uh, coming up as well. Uh, and we want all of you, you're the, the, the kind of the, the first group of, of people, you're the, you're the founders along with us. We want this to, to be a really exciting community uh, that, that'll grow. So please go ahead and uh, jump on, on the LinkedIn group. That's gonna be a great way to, to converse uh, with all of us. Um, and then otherwise, keep an eye out. Uh, our next uh, uh, WebConnect Plus webinar will be in August. No more questions came in. Uh, yeah, unless any of our panelists want uh, to make any closing statements, uh, I will adjourn our, our webinar. Perfect. Yeah, thanks, George. Appreciate the, the MC. Yeah, thanks, thanks a lot, George. No, no problem. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining today. Meeting adjourned.